Okay, welcome to another episode of On the Rush from Off the Cuff. Today, I have a really cool watch for you from Tudor. Um, big shout out to Belmont Watches for lending this one in. And as I'm filming this, it has already sold. So um, I'll still leave a link to their shop so you guys can see what else they have in stock. They honestly uh, do some really well curated uh, pieces in terms of what they pick up and they sell and consign. So very, very cool. I love working with these guys. But back to Tudor. A little about them. They were founded by Hans Wilsdorf back in 1926 as an affordable alternative to the Rolex brand. Um, and in terms of the type of watch, I'd consider this a chronograph because that's what it is. Some key comic characteristics. In design language, you're looking for a chronograph. Of course, you're going to see some external pushers to activate timing functions. You're going to have multiple sub dials to measure elapsed time, often featuring additional scales dependent on the subgenre. Now, the subgenre on this one is a little fun because it's kind of like. Daytona ish, which is more racing, but it's also a diver. It's also a vintage diver, kind of big crown. So it covers a lot uh, in terms of, uh, you know, it, it's just it's overall aesthetic. And some of you will love that and find it charming. And some of you, that will be the deal breaker and why you would never get one because you can't understand what it is um, or what it's for. This is the Black Bay Chrono, and it's a chronograph variant of the popular Black Bay Diver line. And these normally go for $54.50 MSRP. This one was sold through uh, Belmont Watches um, for, I'm sure, a lot less than that. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, I don't have the listing uh, showing me the uh, sale price. Uh, but, you know, typically they do offer outstanding prices and, and discounts. So with all that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand, and take a closer look. Okay, guys, as you can see, quite a handsome piece, definitely really well built, 41 millimeter diameter, 14.2 millimeter thickness. Of course, it's going to look a little thicker on this side because it's a big slab side. Um, so when we get onto this side, it probably looks a little bit more flattering, so we'll keep it there. Uh, so 14.2 millimeters thick, 50 millimeters lug to lug. Thankfully, the uh, end link is a uh, female style end link, so it doesn't add any extra overhang uh, to kind of increase the uh, you know the overall lug width there. Everything is made out of a 316L stainless steel. You're getting this nice box double dome sapphire, so still quite readable even at very harsh angles. Um, really only that box edge is going to give you any type of distortion um, so it's it's very legible and very very handsome I mean this is a good looking watch guys I, I really can't stress that enough um, it, again it's not for everyone it's not even for me um, for more so for the reasons I mentioned earlier in the video in terms of its kind of subgenre its theme uh, for me it just doesn't really come together this is a very cool watch you know of course uh, if I you know if money was no object or somebody gifted this to me I would by no means be disappointed um, but it's just you know in terms of uh, I feel like uh, an execution wise of a theme, that's where it falls short. Execution of a timepiece, of a chronograph, of a diver, it does uh, it does that really, really well, especially considering the price point at $54.50, um, which is you know, just over uh, $5,000, uh, you're getting uh, really a praiseworthy watch in terms of the fit and the finish. Uh, the fixed bezel has this cool aluminum insert, as you can see there, um, and then also uh, you're getting a signed screw down crown with screw down pushers, and we'll unscrew those here so we can see what this looks like when you're actually able to use it. I always think that's the funny thing about screw down pushers is you kind of always see the way that they look or the watch looks essentially when everything's locked down but when you're using it this is what it's going to look like right so and not quite as aesthetically pleasing but functionality wise very nice right like that is that's what you want so very cool very nice so we'll screw these back down i will say the winding action on this movement that's in here, which is the manufacturer caliber MT5813, uh, which from my understanding uh, is a shared movement with Breitling. Um, 
the winding action was just not a pleasure uh, at all. So uh, for me, I mean, definitely let me know if you guys have any experience. If you've owned one, maybe this one is just due for a service um, sometime soon. Um, but for me, the winding action just felt really not good. Um, and to the point to where it almost felt like uh, as I was winding it, it was actually uh, causing the rotor to spin. Uh, so it felt like there was a lot of slippage. I don't know. It just wasn't uh, as nice as I expected it to be. Typically, uh, you know, something more on the more in-house side, um, you know, I, I, I expect it to be in-house for a reason, right? It should, it should be better. So like this should have felt better winding than something like, um, you know, a Valjoux 7750. Um, but I wind those, they have actually really great winding action. So uh, again, let me know in the comments below if you have any experience with this uh, watch or these movements. Um, but it, in terms of specs, really great. COSC certified chronometer, of course. So that's one of the things uh, which you're gonna get in terms of that manufacturer status. Uh, of course, they're gonna go the extra mile and make sure that these are chronometer grade. Uh, so it's gonna be beating at four Hertz or uh, 28, 800 vibrations per hour or eight beats per second. And then it has a 70 hour power reserve, which is plenty of time. Uh, also on the case back here, it is nice and solid, very reminiscent, of course, of a very sterile looking uh, uh, Rolex style of case back, which works. Um, and then getting to the, uh, the dial, uh, where of course everybody loves this dial, it's kind of reverse panda style. You're getting matte black dial uh, with applied indices, you're getting these white sub dials, polished and loomed hands. The loom does glow green, uh, which is great. And then you're getting 200 meters of water resistance, uh, which is fantastic. 22 millimeter lugs, which I think for this size of watch is proportional. Um, so I don't mind that, especially since it does have a nice taper, um, you know, tapering from 22 down to 18. This three link riveted bracelet um, with uh, a milled 20 millimeter flip lock clasp and then screw pin connectors. Uh, it's unfortunately a little bit short for me. Um, to be able to wear so in terms of you know my review it most of it is just tabletop um kind of experience here just because uh, i do have a larger wrist and you know i don't have any extra links to put in this piece uh it's already extended quite a bit but i did want to point out some things that i really do like that tutor does is they use some very nice modern technologies and materials like these these make such a big difference they're using ceramic balls there so that this action of this coming together oh my gosh i can't tell you how much better that feels than see you even have the ceramic balls on the inside too so it's this action and then this action so much better than if they were to use steel i mean steel will do the job don't get me wrong but Oh, that's the way it should feel. That is just, oh, it's so smooth. So, so smooth. Yeah. And then of course this folding section isn't super impressive, honestly. Um, it doesn't even look milled. It looks like it was probably pressed. Um, you know, I could be wrong though, but judging by the way that this is actually two pieces, um, I would say that this probably is just kind of bent. Um, it's nice, uh, it's still thicker gauge than most stamped uh, folding sections, but uh, you know, that doesn't really scream out and sing to me either. Uh, also, you're gonna have only three manual micro adjustment holes there, which I'm sure could change because uh, Tudor did develop that T-Fit clasp, um, so you can get more uh, adjustment on the fly with that. But with that said, um, although this is a little tight on my wrist, we'll still drape it over the wrist to see how it wears. Okay guys, so I can still fit my hand in it. I just can't close the clasp down on my hand, but as you can see, it wears really nicely on my seven and a half inch wrist. Of course, if I get it a little bit closer, it's gonna have some lens distortion look a little bit larger, but I can kind of 
at least pin some of the slack out to make it look a little bit more realistic as if it was closed on the wrist. And this is a really handsome piece. Again, not hating on it from a design perspective. Again, it's more thematically, um, you know, for me, but I think it's still really high value. And what I'll do is leave my hand down here and tighten up the shot so you guys can get a better idea of some of the details on this without uh, it actually looking oversized. Uh, so this is a little bit of a better aspect ratio versus just putting it close to the lens. And you can see it actually doesn't appear very large. I mean, at 41 millimeters, it's actually not super large. Um, and even though the, I think the 22 millimeter lugs are quite proportional, I don't think it would have broken the design to make them 20 millimeter. Um, it's just something, of course, uh, most of the original Black Bay models were 41 millimeter watches with 22 millimeter lugs. So of course they want to, you know, get their money's worth out of that tooling. Um, but I'm sure at some point uh, they should probably downsize and get this to the point to where maybe on a Black Bay 58 style of uh, layout, it, it will definitely, I think, uh, really sing on the wrist. But right now, not doing a bad job whatsoever. And if they never shrink this thing down, uh, I think plenty of people will still buy it. Um, but if they did shrink it down, I think it would definitely, you know, catch fire um, and expand even more. Although uh, the Black Bay line for Tudor is popular enough as is and, you know, uh, I don't think they're really in a rush to expand uh, any more than they already have. Um, so with that said, let's actually get this piece off the wrist, set up for some loom shots, the light transition and closing thoughts. Okay, let's go ahead and have the lights here. As you can see, you're getting outstanding loom, especially for a chronograph, but that's kind of because this is also a dive watch. Um, so it looks really good. Um, it's a proper loom, and again, it exceeds for luminescence on a chronograph and absolutely hits the mark for a dive watch. But one thing I always like to work in to these loom shots is low light transition, because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're gonna find yourself coming in and out of buildings, walking underneath overhangs, maybe hanging out underneath the shade of a tree, or just spending time in your favorite automobile. So it is really nice to see what these colors, textures, and finishes render like in less than optimal lighting to maybe even include some harsh lighting uh, that could expose any type of defects. But you can see here, uh, really quite uniform in terms of the way that the lighting is just gliding across the brushing there. Not too many high polished surfaces apart from those nice beveled lugs there. Um, uh, and that still has a nice deep luster. But you can see this is actually still quite, uh, you know, uh, legible. And I really do like that. And I think that's something that's underappreciated about these type of bezel inserts. Uh, you know, these aluminum ones. You know, I think a lot of people kind of see those old school. Uh, but you can actually read them under lighting, uh, which is great versus it being hyper reflective or anything like that. These are going to wash out much less of a percentage of the time, depending on that lighting there. And uh, it is just a really, really handsome piece uh, that again, I see why so many people love it. Um, I do think that this one might be better than the Panda dial um, just because I feel like the spacing between the two sub dials uh, appears better on this one. Uh, I feel like it, they seem too far apart from each other, too separated um, on the white dial variation. Let me know what you think in the comments below on that one. I know this is such a popular watch, it's been reviewed so many times. Um, but I was really appreciative of Belmont for sneaking this over to me, uh, you know, right before it ended up getting sold. So in terms of me, for me, closing thoughts on the wrist, it lays actually really well, surprisingly well. Uh, the dial does have some great balanced proportions, so it doesn't feel oversized by any means. Uh, in terms of model variants, of course, also available with white dial and black sub dials, which would be a more traditional Panda versus this being the more reverse Panda layout. In terms of comparable models in the space, I mean, honestly, these are pretty unrivaled. Uh, you're getting a luxury, you know, chronograph 
for around 5,000 bucks. Uh, that is really good. Uh, especially when you consider um, that the Moon Watch has really become more and more scarce and harder to purchase at below retail because of that scarcity um, and that high demand, it's really made the Black Bay Chrono kind of become the new default luxury chronograph. Um, so very cool for Tudor, of course, um, and great for collectors and, and all those who love Tudor. Um, but definitely let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked the video, please do it like. And if you haven't already, Please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.